I can, uh, Again, welcome to today's One Million by One Million Strategy Roundtable for Entrepreneurs. This is part of the 1M1M one &one program, and it's a, our program is a global virtual incubator today. I think it is the only global virtual incubator. And our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue, build a trillion dollars in global GDP and 10 million jobs. And we do that in support of that mission. We do a lot of different activities besides the uh, incubation program itself, we do these roundtables and we do a lot of work in the media. So you will see a lot of our writings in various media channels, both on our own blog as well as uh, you will see writings from our house in, in a lot of different places. Okay, this is a 204th roundtable. So as you can imagine, Doing this over 204 sessions means that we've been doing this for quite a long time. Um, and we've learned a lot through that process, you know. We've learned a lot about what's going on in the entrepreneurship universe. We lo we've learned a lot about, you know, what yeah. people's processes are, what people's challenges are, and, and so on and so forth. So it puts us in a great position to be able to do a lot of pattern matching and a lot of uh, dot connection, as we call it. Now, if you're live tweeting the show, which you're very welcome to do, please use the hashtag 1M1M. And our uh, Twitter handles are at 1M by 1M, at 1M, by 1M and at Stromana. Please feel free to follow those. We, we maintain very content-rich, uh, interesting Twitter channels. So please feel free to use those. We also publish all recordings of these roundtables as well as other things that we do you know, cartoons and all kinds of other things that are available through the YouTube channel, um, which is 1M1M Roundtables. And feel free to take a look at that as well. Now, we're going to do a, a bit of work with slide presentations. People who have sent us slides ahead of time, we're going to spend some time uh, working with those slides. And we'll also be talking to people. So you will be able to dial in and um, and talk to us. So that this is what this is this live calling is what gives us the round table feel, you know. So uh, the instructions on that is let us know in public chat that you are calling in and make sure you have your computer on mute. Otherwise you're going to uh, stream a lot of disturbance into the call. The no number to call is 4793208 area code 650 if you're calling internationally the country code is 1. Access code 664-991-770. Uh, keep your phone muted until I ask for you. And, uh, you know, just we'll, we'll put these instructions up when we are ready to take calls again. Um, we are going to start with Chris. Is Chris on the call? Yes, I am. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Uh, so just to set some context for you folks in, on, in the room, Chris Carter is a premium member of the 1M1M program, and he came into our program through our partnership with SAP's Startup Focus program uh, centering around the HANA Developer Network. And Chris is doing really well. He has uh, over a million dollars worth of revenue. He's got a bunch of very interesting clients and everything. And, uh, and, and one of the reasons we are talking today is to explore some channel partnership opportunities that I have identified for uh, for Chris and I we need to just chat about what are the um, you know mechanics of that and, and whether it's a good fit or not so Chris if you want to take like a couple of minutes and just set context for the group telling them what you do and where you are that would be great and then we'll dive into Thank the you. discussion Perfect. I appreciate it, and thank you. Um, it's it's been a, a truly an honor to actually be a part of this group because I get a lot of insights for not only myself but for the company and for our staff. And we've been involved with it for about six and a half, seven months now. Um, and what we do as an organization, we are as uh, you made reference, is a SAP HANA uh, solutions company. We have software solutions built on HANA, and we provide what SAP is now calling one of the first white box or white labeled uh, SAP HANA clouds for organizations to be able to utilize and to get into and be able to have the benefits of what SAP HANA provides. And from their point of view and from our point of view, SAP HANA is, of course, an in-memory database that provides 
extreme amounts of speed that allows you to churn big data, uh, massive amounts of data in your memory systems. And we do that from a cloud with our solution called Ignite, then provide that analytical data back to an organization literally in seconds, uh, milliseconds at some times, depending upon the amounts of data. And uh, very fortunate, I was talking more with Maureen before you came on board. We actually just got a new signed contract just this morning. So uh, uh, thank you very much for being my good luck charm this morning. I appreciated that. And, uh, that's, that's always wonderful news. To get new contracts yes. is always wonderful news. So, Chris, yeah, so uh, one please. thing I uh, would like to understand and, and get an update on since we last spoke is mm -hmm. what is your current status on productization of some of the vertical solutions that you were working on? I know you have a solution, for instance, in hospital energy management. Um, mm -hmm. You have solutions in retail. So if you could quickly summarize what, uh, where you are with those, because you know, as you for the two opportunities that I see are uh, kind of system integrator type opportunities, and uh, system integrators would look for a productized situation to then take on take on and build a cloud services or a system integration services business on, and they would bring you to a lot of clients, but they would also want to do uh, a bunch of and they want to make money off off your product. Oh, yes. That's the that's sure. the opportunity that uh, is in front of you, and you need to see if you can play into that. Certainly, <laughs> excuse me. So, uh, what we've done with our um, solutions and with the industry solutions, including healthcare, including automotive, including manufacturing, and others, is we've mm -hmm. taken them and we've we've um, formulated a template that, based upon that specific industry utilizing data segments that organizations tend to have, be it in the marketing fashion, be it in the financial fashion, uh, whatever the case may be within that vertical, and having a template that is designed that we know what the data points are or the touch points that needs to come through and what data. So if you're using Oracle and SAP and you're using other components, we know how those fit based upon a specific template. Now remember, though, every template is not 100% because companies do not have 100% across the entire industry of all the same data coming in. So it gives it the flexibility to be able to modify what data streams are coming in mm -hmm. and still be able to utilize a very clean visualization layer, either with Lumera or MicroStrategy, one of the others that are available. But it's a clean template that gives them a fresh start. And then the system integrators, they, can, they would love it because – not only do we provide them with the template and the start, now they can start to do their work and they can start to do their billing um, of hours with their staff um, because they're going to have to mix and match and they're going to have to make sure that integration points are utilized um, from our cloud, and, or excuse me, from their data into our cloud and then to the visualization layer. And it makes it really clean and easy. And, and what's behind that in terms of um, – you know, productized solution behind the template layer. So in the horizontal layer, what, what have you productized now? Sure. So it's actually a utilizing the business object suite and Lumera. So what we did is we took business objects as the back end, since it is one of SAP's certified tools that they utilize, and we created templates for those industries to be able to have that template facilitated in our cloud in Ignite up in our cloud solutions, which we have three data centers for, take that template and be able to understand what data streams are coming in, bring those data streams in so then that we can utilize that inside of HANA. Then we can churn it through that template. And if we need to add a stream here, a stream there, I'll give you an example, marketing. Uh, we've got a customer that wants to use HANA and is using our template with Ignite where we facilitated that template to uh, take the API from Facebook, Google+, uh, Twitter, and Instagram, and be able to bring that data in, structured and unstructured, be able to understand by a couple of key terms that they wanted to use. So it is a manual where an end user in the visualization layer will type in some key terms or ideas that they wish to start to bring to the table and understand what's going on with their product or their company, and then be able to visualize that in a multitude of ways, be it in pie charts, graphs, pretty colors, 
and that template again is built off of you've got the, the Lumera side for the visualization or we can use others and then we've got the template side for the data being brought into HANA through the business objects um, suite and into the HANA repository. Okay. So, um, how much of this information uh, in a in a properly packaged way is available on your website at this point? Uh, so, it's actually in the SAP Marketplace. Uh, if we if folks go to the SAPMarketplace.com and they put in Ignite, it's there. Um, one of the things that we do on our corporate website, it is a, it's a door opener for us because we give them the ability to understand what they can and can't do. And if they wanted to go out and have it as a product, um, there is still, as I stated earlier, there is still some manual processes with that because of the way that HANA is designed. You still have to have that manual interaction with the integration of those data streams. It's um, it, it's a great tool, but it doesn't it isn't fully automated to that process. Um, HANA is not, so you have to have that manual participation. So that, that's why the system integrators like it so much because they do get a, a lot of hands-on, but this gives at least a good 50% starting point with a standard template, better than anybody else on the market today. Okay. Because, you know, to open a discussion like this, I'm going to need to send them something, you know? Uh, we have... We have loads of information on our templates. We have loads of information on what is the benefits. Um, we're actually working with partners across uh, the globe on what we bring to the table and how it benefits them so they can uh, receive uh, revenues on their consulting staff, how they can receive revenues by utilizing our cloud. We're working with system we... integrators, bottom line. Uh, we are, yes. So do we're you have any, the... a short write-up that explains what you have, and specifically with the system integrator audience in mind? Sure, I can provide that to you immediately. Okay, why don't you send me that by email, and, and I will uh, I will check with uh, with Cognizant and KPMG and see what uh, you know what the opportunities are, and I'll connect you with them and see. We'll have to explore, but it's worth exploring. Yeah, we're actually doing the same things with uh, E and Y as well as some other folks um, because we we got into the HANA market uh, before it even became a market and now uh, organizations they don't want to build out a HANA practice per se uh, there's actually some that have said you know what we we're too big to have this market per se because we're only farming certain deals so they've come to us and we're literally their back end they don't companies don't even know that we're the, the folks behind them but we're providing the, that ignites and we're providing the solutions for it and it works out very well for everyone already got EY we also have a relationship with EY do have you got EY already uh, we have not got them finalized we're working with the team here in Milwaukee Michael Schultz who used to be with SAP America um, is now their partner and we're working directly with him uh, for a couple of uh, industries both the retail as well as the pharmaceuticals okay all right. Well, let's start with these, and if you need, you can let me know if you need help with EY. I appreciate any help you can give. You always have been great. All right, Chris. Thank you for the update, and we'll be uh, in touch by email after this. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, Krishna Kumar Parashuram, you're up next. And uh, hi. Uh, I think. Do you go by Krishna? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, they call me Shabir KK. What do you like to be called? Hello. Krishna or Krishna Kumar? What do you What do you go by? Uh, uh, they call me KK. AK. KK. AK. Okay. All right. AK uh, is here from our partnership with Oracle, folks. He's. Uh, I imagine he is planning to apply for the current round of Oracle 1M1M challenge that is going on, and the application deadline is coming up on February 20th. So uh, this uh, KK, okay, got it. So KK is uh, up here probably to discuss how he's planning to apply for that contest, right, for KK? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. What are you What are you thinking about? 
Hi, okay. Uh, thanks for introducing me. Um, so uh, for this program, uh, we can order to this 1M by 1M challenge. Um, I just uh, thought about this idea, like, uh, you know, um, so uh, many of those IT companies or even uh, many other multinationals, uh, they have been uh, using these uh, ID cards mm -hmm. uh, with the bag uh, hanging around the uh, employee. Whenever yeah. they <coughs> enter the campus, they used to swipe up this card for the access for the into the campus. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, thinking about the idea that uh, uh, why could not we develop a smartphone uh, smartphone application uh, wherein. Um, uh, there will be a communication between uh, the smartphone and the uh, uh, server or uh -huh. uh, any other re any receiver um, at the entrance of each campus uh -huh. so that uh, whenever the employee uh, is nearing the campus at the gate or the entrance, it automatically senses this uh, signal from the smartphone and uh, communicates yep. and then uh, uh, gives access to the employee. Okay. Uh, so it's, a, it's an interesting yes, idea. Let me give you a bit of a framework on how to think about it as you're preparing your uh, you know, application and then your pitch. Um, so, yes. you know, campuses, corporate campuses all have uh, the infrastructure in place, right? They have the hardware already uh, attached to every single door, and the employees have the cards, the badges with which to access those. That infrastructure is already in place. If you want to bring in a new system, does that mean that they're going to have to rip all that hardware off and all that wiring off and install new things? And if that is the assumption, then what is the benefit of that? You know, in ter for the corporation, it's something that you're going to need to understand is why would they want to do that? So. One thing we insist on is customer validation. What you need to understand is try to go talk to a facilities manager um, at maybe at Oracle, maybe at some other campus, and, and uh, you know people who are who are responsible for designing, making these decisions of how facilities are going to get managed, and try to get input from them so that you have an understanding of what is the you know, what is the uptick for this kind of solution in the base of uh, of these corporate campuses? Make sense? Uh, sure, uh, I, I, I take your point. Um, so um, on that uh, point, I just, uh, can you go to the next slide uh, sure. on my... Uh, I mean uh, the last slide, for please. The last slide. This one. Uh, next, next last. So there I have listed a uh, list of things. Um, so th this is uh, I have not consulted any uh, anybody for this. Uh, I just uh, uh, thought over about it. Uh, what is the why the why anybody should uh, go for a change? So one uh, thing is um, whatever I'm saying or uh, whatever you. Uh, were told me that there is an infrastructure in place, and then we have to replace this infrastructure and bring in a new uh, kind of setup mm -hmm. uh, that will uh, uh, add up to the cost. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, but um, what I'm thinking is, um, whatever the hardware is there, uh, like the servers or um, or maybe a few additional hardware may be required. Um, but the uh, cost effectiveness of this is. Um, um, we have we don't have to incur um, recurring costs on creating the IDs for each and every employee, new employee, or mm -hmm. uh, time over and again uh, uh, when the ID well, gets. Uh, idea is a good idea. It's you know it's something that kind of seems obvious, right? So yeah. you need to go talk to the reason we insist on customer validation is if if the idea is that obvious, why haven't they done it yet? Right? It begs that question. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. with you. It seems yeah. like a no-brainer to do something like this. Why haven't they done it yet? Okay. Right? 
So that's, that's yeah, in, that's in general, so our philosophy in this program is to really work as much as possible with customers. Whether you're working on a B2B business, B2C business, it doesn't matter, but you need to immerse yourself in customers so that whatever it is that you're designing are, you know, products and services are designed in collaboration with customers and that that's something that you have a full understanding of that customer's value, what is it, what, whatever it is that you're building. Okay. okay? So it's a okay. good idea. Yeah. You know, to me, it makes perfect sense. It seems like to you, it makes perfect sense. Now we need to understand from the customers, why haven't they done it yet? And if, you, if they were to do it, what, what's the, what are the gating items and, and what are their issues and, and concerns in adopting something like this? Okay, sure. I'll uh, I'll take it up. Okay. Right. And uh, the other thing was, um, uh, so uh, how how I need to uh, prepare uh, anything more uh, other than this? Uh, whatever I've given, uh, uh, whatever the information that I've given, yeah. Well, there's a else? form that you're going to need to fill out to whatever extent you can fill it out. Obviously, it's not going to be completely precise and, and all fleshed out, then you wouldn't need incubation. What you're competing for in this contest is um, for a scholarship to study with the 1M1M one &one program and develop your idea. That's what Oracle is sponsoring and that's, that's what the contest is about. The whole Oracle Entrepreneurship Challenge is about finding entrepreneurs who want to be incubated with 1M1M one &one and then develop ideas so that Oracle can build new businesses around and, and so forth new revenues around. So that's the that's really what the this whole thing is about. So uh, so you need to fill out the application point to an extent that we can get a sense of the idea and, and uh, you know how you present it. All of this is going to determine whether you win a slot or not and then uh, then we'll work actually together on if you win a slot then we will actually work together on your idea to flesh it out and, and build something out of it. Make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Right. Thank you, KK. Good luck with your uh, application process. Thank you. Okay. The next person is Yaisa Peter. Are you on Hello. the call? Yes, I'm here. Where are you dialing from? I am in Miami, but I am originally from Barbados. Oh, okay. All right. Well, tell, and, and how do you pronounce your name? Yaisa. Yaisa. Beautiful name. All right. Yaisa. Tell us, what are you working on? Yaisa? Are you there? Are you there? I'm here. So go ahead Hello? with your presentation. Okay. Um, I've been, I studied fashion design, and for the past few years, I've been mentoring with a lady that has over 30 years in the manufacturing aspect of, of fashion. So I decided that I wanted to take the initiative to create a lifestyle brand um, out of Barbados. And uh, the reason that I wanted to do this is because I see that there is a, a there's a uh, imbalance in the import and export activity um, as it pertains to the apparel sector. So I wanted to um, try to redirect some of that uh, import expenditure into local expenditure as it pertains to the apparel sector. I wanted to engage in and perfect domestic manufacturing if possible. This could lead to uh, creating a lot of jobs um, in the industry right now. And then um, eventually once we get a good business model in place, I would like to see if we can um, engage in international export and try to contribute to uh, redirecting our, and bringing in foreign exchange into the island. And uh, let me ask you a couple of questions here. Do you have okay. a sense of what is the size of the apparel industry in Barbados? Yes, um, right now they, they, currently there are 450 people that are employed in the industry. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about, 
I'm talking about what is the size size of the you know what what's the scale of revenue? What's the market size of apparel? How much apparel is sold <clears throat> Barbados? Well, <clears throat> they bring in forty million dollars in imports every year for clothing. Okay. And a greater percentage of that is in women's wear. Okay. Yes. Um, I have information. Forty million dollars worth of clothing they bring in, as in that is the wholesale price, and it's sold at uh, something like twice that price. Is that the? Uh, yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And then there's a large uh, duty that's imparted onto that price because of the imports. I see. So by the time yeah. this industry goes to the consumers, you're talking about a, a hundred million dollar industry. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I would say so, yes. So if you were to ma manufacture in Bar Barbados and, and sell in Barbados, the industry yeah. segment, the industry that you're looking at is a percentage of the $100 million industry. So if you're looking at the women's clothing sector, you'd be looking at probably yes. 70%, $70 million industry. Probably. Yes, I would say so. Okay. Um, and currently I would say food for it has because um, most of the imports are woven and the Barbados is a tropical climate, and I think knitwear, uh, I think they are not um, finding or resource sourcing enough knitwear products with their um, imports. So I think that that's something that uh, people would have a fast reaction towards because of the climate, because of the demographic. Okay. And knits are easier to manufacture than than woven. So that's uh, um, how I would like to enter the market with basic goods that people can easily incorporate into their wardrobe. So what um, what do you have available in terms of resources to get something like this off the ground? Who's going to be designing the products? Who's going to be? Um, I would okay. Um, well, I got training um, in fashion, so I would be doing the designing. Um, okay. There are factories currently in Barbados, but their problem is that they're not getting enough business because what the local designers do is they custom make their own clothing, and then they source the raw materials on the retail level. Like They buy the fabric from a retail fabric store, and then they just make like one piece. They don't manufacture it. They're more doing it from a hobby perspective as opposed to a business sustainable business model in place. And that's that's something that's lacking and something that I would like to take advantage of. So there are actually factories in Barbados that could be manufacturing for you? Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. Then comes the question of capital. Of course, anytime you want to get into any kind of manufacturing that requires some amount of capital. What is yes. what capital availability do you have? Um, well, the reason I am doing this pitch to you is because there, there, are, there is funding available. There's quite a lot of funding available. It's just that people don't know about it. Or I guess don't want to take the time to um, write up a proposal. So I just wanted to know, if, wanted to get your professional opinion if you think that this project is viable, so that I could go ahead and write up a proposal and see about getting um, some capital. But I do know there are funds available that 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 would give like at most two hundred thousand u s dollars to fund a project like this in barbados you can, you you believe that there are funds available for uh, two hundred thousand dollars worth of funds available to launch a project like this can you speak up I cannot hear you um yes yes there is um but it has to back to the economy and back to the people, provide jobs. Hey, so we cannot hear you. You need to, I don't know what kind of a setup you're in. If you're close to a phone or something, speak into the phone so that we can hear you. Um, the funding would be accessible as long as I can prove that I can give back to the economy and I can create jobs for people. Like so this is a government to... funding from the Barbados government? Yes. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. So, look, the the one thing that we know is viable are e-commerce businesses are plenty viable. 
And, okay. uh, you know, in every sector, we are seeing tremendous uptick in e-commerce. Whether e-commerce is a common behavior in Barbados is something that you know and I don't. But it's a question that you have to ask, you know, from a market validation point of view. You need to understand, are people in Barbados willing to buy on the Internet? Are they willing to buy, um, you know, buy clothes on the Internet? These are questions that you need to validate. Okay. And if all those questions are answered right, then doing a clothing business online is plenty viable. There are lots of clothing businesses online. Okay. Okay. In the U.S., so there are plenty of clothing businesses online. Yes, this is true. So you're saying that I should look at e-commerce? Yes. You need to understand okay. what is the situation in Barbados vis-a-vis e-commerce. And if there is any clothing e-commerce, my hunch is there could be e-commerce, but there may not be clothing e-commerce. But you have to check both. Right. And if right. you're yeah. for the first, uh, you know, first vendor starting clothing e-commerce, that has certain, um, you know, challenges. That's not an easy yeah. situation to operate from. Mhm. Okay. But you need to understand okay. these things to decide, where, you know, what is going to be involved in in. Getting on the, you know, on the operational side, if you can get your manufacturing in place, the, you need to figure out the logistics of drop ship. So if you get the orders, how are you going to drop, drop ship? That can be, you know, at the early stages when you're small, it can be handled even out of people's garages and, and uh, you know, basements and so forth, which is how a lot of e-commerce companies have started. And then gradually okay. you get to a warehouse. Um, okay. That's yeah, but but there needs to be uh, again you know in some geographies certainly the U.S. has a very robust um, postal system you know postal and package delivery system UPS FedEx uh, the U.S. Postal Service and so forth so we have no problems with with the dropship infrastructure but there are countries where this dropship infrastructure does not exist like for instance in India it's a lousy dropship infrastructure. So a lot of the e-commerce companies have been hindered by that because they have to then create their own career service, which is expensive mm. and very complex. Although okay. Barbados is a small place. so Yes, very small. Doing that is not going to be that complicated in a small place. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but it costs money. Whether it's complicated or not, it still costs money. That's the yes. issue. Okay. Um, then in, on the... Online infrastructure side, it's it's actually very simple. There are tons of e-commerce, uh, you know, platforms that you can ride on, and it's it's very inexpensive to get started. Uh, you know, Volution, Big Commerce, Moonfruit. There's all sorts of e-commerce platforms that you can get on and and uh, get your business launched for very cheap. As far as the catalog and and the payment system is concerned. Yeah. Are- okay. I have one more question. Do you think that in the beginning, that I should try to uh, get the clothes in boutiques first, as opposed to doing e-commerce and and already putting myself in a state of having invent dealing with inventory. Um, even to to do a boutique, you're going to have to deal with inventory, right? Uh, yeah. Well, what I mean was, there are a lot of boutiques around the island that that we could place their orders and then I would go into production, which would say, which would save me money as opposed to doing e-commerce where I would have to manufacture a certain number of pieces and then... Um, Not necessarily. Use- the way is fine. Mm-hmm. It's just, uh, the pe- reason people prefer e-commerce is they don't have to pay rent. You know, rent in, mm. in uh, street, on streets with high foot traffic, which is where you want to be if you want to do a boutique, tend to be very expensive. So that's a trade-off that you're going to have to make. Either way is okay. fine. Okay. The, pe- okay. the reason people do e-commerce is because it's it's kind of something that you can do out of your homes and stuff. Without right. Paying. You know, if you have to right. pay, I don't know what are rents are in Bar- Bar- Barbados, but if you have to pay like $3,000, $5,000 a month in rent, instead if you put that money into inventory and, and sell it, online, that's a much better business model to get a business off the ground. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That sounds good. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, folks, uh, we are going to get back to calls and public chat Q&A. So uh, the proceed- protocol at this point is 
feel free to use the public chat to introduce yourselves, tell us what projects you're working on, where you're dialing from, how did you find out about 1M1M, and if you would like to call in, let us know in public chat, and then dial in following the call-in instructions on your screen. So while you're sorting through this stuff, um, you know, whether, what questions you want to ask, what do you want to discuss, what do you want to present, I'm going to spend five minutes giving you an overview of 1M1M and how we work with entrepreneurs. So uh, let's do that segment while you're orienting yourself to do your little pitches or elevator pitches, presentations, questions, whatever you want to do by calling in or asking in public chat. Okay, so if you like, by the way, what we are doing here, you can, you know, our request to you is let people know that this resource exists and, and it exists, it has existed for a while, people are using it, you know, over 20,000 people have been coming to these roundtables, so we've got a, you know, pretty uh, good penetration into the market and we'd love to ha have more people know about their service. So 1M by 1M, as I uh, said earlier, is the only global virtual incubator in the world today. Our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars in annual revenue and beyond build a trillion dollars in global GDP and 10 million jobs. We have a bunch of resources that you can access through our various channels. The first and foremost, and something that is completely free, is our blog series. There's a tremendous amount of really interesting and informative, educational, inspirational information on our blog, and please use that to you know, orient yourself in the entrepreneurship universe. Then we also have the Entrepreneur Journeys book series that is available on, everything is available on Amazon Kindle. So all eight books that are on your screen right now are available on Amazon Kindle. The first four, by the way, in the Entrepreneur Journeys series are also available as paper books on Amazon. And um, after that, you know, from the fifth onwards, we decided to do Kindle only just because it's a lot faster for us to to just work with Kindle, and, and that gives us distribution around the world very quickly. Uh, nonetheless, you will find all of them here, and that's where we start synthesizing some of the lessons of our um, 1M1M one &one program, and you'll see case studies. Each of these volumes have a, have a set of case studies, and they synthesize certain learnings of the industry. So for instance, bootstrapping, positioning, these are really important pieces uh, you know, that we have, that we teach in the 1M1M program. And these are important cornerstone elements of our methodology. Bootstrapping using services is one specialized way of bootstrapping that is extremely effective. And you know, companies like Oracle, SAP have all been started using this bootstrapping using services mechanism, you know. So it's a, it's a powerful strategy of bootstrapping and we use that very effectively in a lot of our portfolio companies. Okay, um, the blog is astronometry.com or 1m1m.com. Everything is available through, this is what the site looks like, by the way. Um, and you will find a lot of video FAQs. So featured videos are a bunch of video FAQs explaining more about the program. So you can do your own research. You will not need to ask anybody anything. The website is very rich, and it trusts your own intelligence to be able to figure out whether you want to use the program or not. Um, these roundtables happen every week. We, today we are doing our 204th roundtable, and we've coached thousands of um, entrepreneurs. The free public roundtables navigation bar on the top brown uh, bar is where you'll find all the registration dates and registration pages. You can register to pitch or to attend. Um, all the dates, everything are over there. We also have a premium program, and that is a $1,000 annual membership fee for extensive methodology guidance through a very powerful inspirational educational curriculum. We do strategy consulting similar to this format, but of course they're much more in-depth session because we have the, the entrepreneurs also using the curriculum and then using the roundtables in tandem with the curriculum. So the discussions are more sophisticated and more advanced. We help you with business development. 
We also help you with financing if you're working on a financing financeable deal, and uh, then we also help you with media relations. So let's go through them in a little bit more detail. By the way, you can meet the one and one million dollar club uh, uh, through this blog series on on our website as well, and. Uh, we provide an ROI analysis of our offering, which is $375,000 plus 5 to 10 percent equity worth of value that is available for a $1,000 annual membership fee only. So this quantifying the 1M1M one one value equation gives you the detailed analysis of the ROI that we provide. How to use 1M1M one one effectively is orientation material that's also available on the website. The 1M1M one one self-assessment is a free, sir, free tool that we recommend that you use. These are the questions that you should be asking yourself. No matter what you're doing, whether you're preparing for you know, how to build your business, you're, you're doing internal strategy work, or you're preparing for an investor pitch, these are questions that you are going to need to answer. They're really important questions. And, uh, if you are, and of course, we understand that because you, are, you haven't done this before, perhaps, there are knowledge gaps in your understanding of the industry. Um, for that, we have provided uh, videos of our, from our curriculum, and those are accessible to only our premium members. So uh, again, there's tons of information, what to expect from the premium program, video FAQs, and so forth, which will help you understand and evaluate the program. The curriculum is designed in a web self-service mode, so you can do it at your own time, in the middle of the night, and you know, first thing in the morning, whenever you want to, you have time to work on the curriculum, it's fine. Uh, we design, we've designed the curriculum to be primarily video lectures and case studies. So we've been developing case studies since 2006. We have the biggest collection of case studies anywhere in the world in early stage. IT and IT enabled services entrepreneurship. So over 600 successful entrepreneurs have come and shared their journeys with us, and we have created this based on their input. They have, we've captured their stories, their case studies, and their learnings, and then packaged the whole thing up into something that you can digest in a relatively compact time. So we suggest that you do 50 hours of core curriculum and 50 hours of electives. The core has seven major topics, bootstrapping, positioning, market sizing, customer validation, financing, customer acquisition, and team building. The electives are aligned with the industry trends, so Web 3.0 e-commerce, cloud computing and business solutions, outsourcing and consulting, mobile and social apps, healthcare IT, online education, gaming, these are all elective modules where we see a lot of activity these days. Uh, our methodology is lean, capital-efficient, bootstrap startups. Um, we, as I said, we do a lot of work in the media. One of the things we've been to, we've learned from the industry is that um, early-stage companies have a really, really hard time getting any media coverage. The press does not cover companies that are have not um, doesn't do not have big funding announcements to make. So we use our clout in the media to get you coverage. And that's just, you know, that's just a, an answer to a problem, basically. We have decided to off, put something together so that we can address that gap in the market. We also let you use our quite extensive social media channels. So Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, we have huge uh, following. And we let you use our um, mechanisms to be able to push messages into that channel. Uh, we let you use our blog as well. We cover you on our blog that is also exposes you to important people, including investors, customers, channel partners. Um, and that's very helpful. People have got lots of calls from uh, you know, relevant people, leads, and so forth through this kind of coverage that we expose you to. So those of you who are in the business of entrepreneurship development, we also have an affiliate program. So we partner very easily, very flexibly. If you would like to partner with us, uh, we'll be happy to make you uh, an affiliate of the program. Upcoming free roundtables every week. In uh, February, we have roundtables, Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Vision India 2020 is another book that I wrote that is basically an idea generation book. So it has actually $45 billion business ideas focused on India, but it's also 
uh, applicable. Those ideas often are applicable to any of the developing markets. So it could be applicable to Africa. It could be ap applicable to East Asia, to Latin America, uh, you know, whatever. So it, it, it uses a technique called visioning, and uh, it's a very effective technique for idea generation. So you may want to take a look at that. We have a program called the 1M1M one &one Incubator in a Box, and uh, that is the program through which we have partnerships with SAP, Oracle, Nokia, and a bunch of other companies. Um, and what this does is it enables anyone in any part of the world to start up a global incubator right away. And that could be companies, it could be investors, it could be governments, it could be academic institutions, entrepreneurship development organizations, anyone can use our program to launch an incubator of their own. So, you know, running you through the more recent books, uh, depending on what you're working on, where you are, any of these may be of interest to you. And we are back to call in time. So, who wants to call in? Please also use the public chat to introduce yourselves. We love to use these sessions as networking as well. So we want to know who you are and what you're working on, you know, help each of you get to know the others and introduce yourselves. So use the public chat. By the way, just use the public chat. Please set it such that it sends to all participants and not privately to me or privately to Maureen. There's Kamesh from Oracle India. And you're in Hyderabad? All right. How is uh, Hyderabad celebrating the selection of uh, Satya Nadella as the CEO of Microsoft, Kamesh? So the new CEO of Microsoft, by the way, folks, is from Hyderabad, India. So I'm sure Hyderabad as a city is extremely proud of that. And both Oracle and uh, Microsoft Soft have very large operations in Hyderabad. Who else is on the call? Please, uh, please introduce yourselves. I know there are lots of people in the room, so please introduce yourselves. I also want to introduce you to Irina Patterson on the 1M1M team. Uh, Irina is going to be your contact point to 1M1M. So if you decide that you want to work with 1M1M in the premium program and you want to talk to somebody to ask questions about that and so forth, please feel free to call Irina Patterson. Irina, if you could please put your phone number, Skype ID, and email address on the in the public chat. That would be awesome. And feel free to call her, folks. Is anybody planning to call in? Would anybody like to call in? KK, you would like to ask more questions? Please go ahead. You're already on the call, so unmute your line and, and go ahead. Hello? Yes, go ahead, KK. Yeah, uh, can you uh, brief more about this 1M uh, 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 by 1M sign program with Oracle? Um, what do you what do you want to know more about? Ask me questions. I'll, I'll be happy to answer your questions. So uh, tell me what so you're looking. How for. how this program actually uh, works? Or um, sure. going to uh, go forward? Okay. Suppose if the if the somebody is going to get selected in the final round, uh, so after that what? Okay. So so what will happen is we are going to be closing the application process on February twentieth after which the Oracle management will deliberate on the applications and decide on which, um, which 20 go into the finals. And then the finals okay. are going to be these kinds of WebEx sessions, but they're going to be closed Oracle-only sessions, where these 20 are going to get to pitch to a panel of judges, including Oracle executives as well as myself. And we will decide on which ones win scholarships to the 1M1M program. So once that is decided, you will be notified and you will be given your credentials to be able to sign up and log in for the 1M1M premium program. 
And at that point, you will take your idea and, and we'll go through the process of developing that idea and, and in the 1M1M incubation program, in our premium program. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so is there any, um, uh, there is any selection criteria which we need to focus on? So go through the application process. If you go, if you look at the application form, it actually outlines all the different questions. That, so in terms of what Oracle is looking for, Oracle is looking for internal entre entrepreneurs, like, so intrapreneurs, to generate new business ideas that can generate that can develop serious revenues for Oracle as a company. That's really what we are looking for here. Okay. Come up with an idea that can become a business, new business or new adjuncts to a an existing business that the Oracle sales channel can can bring to market and significantly generate revenues for Oracle. Those are the kinds of ideas that are uh, that are going to get the maximum, uh, you know, attention and resources. Okay. 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 So, uh, so if if anybody is uh, got selected in the final round or within the 15, uh, so what uh, what will be um, how is it going to go through this program or? Uh, it's all entirely online. You're going to get your login credentials. You'll log into the program, and, and you're going to need to study the curriculum, and you're going to need to attend the private roundtables. We have versions of these kinds of roundtables that are private, members-only roundtables. So you're going to have to attend those private roundtables every week. You're going to go through the curriculum uh, and, and understand how to develop your idea, develop pitches, and so forth. And as we, you know, and you're going to be pitching to me from time to time to, to get feedback. And then once you're ready, you're going to be presenting to the Oracle management. The Oracle management will review your presentation and decide what they want to do with it. But before you go up to present to the Oracle management, you're going to go through, you're going to get lots of help in the process. Okay. Okay. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Answer all your questions, KK? Yeah, sure. Okay, good. Anybody else? Questions, comments, introductions, call-ins? No? I'm actually uh, quite interested in knowing who all are in the room. I see so many people. Um, whom I've not met before. You know, every session we have new people from different parts of the world. So if you could just take a couple of minutes and, and just tell us where, where you're dialing from, what projects you're working on, and what brings you here, how did you come here, that would be wonderful. No, are you guys too shy to introduce yourselves? Michael Kleeman, Kleeman is here from Oracle. Jing, Dave, and I are listening in. And you guys are in Burlington, Massachusetts, from what I recall, yes? Right. That's the Oracle operation in Burlington, Massachusetts, okay? Nupur Srivastava says she's joining the program today. That's fantastic, Nupur. Welcome to the welcome to the premium program. We look forward to working with you and seeing you at the private roundtable next week. Then, if you join today, you will be at the premium private roundtable next week. Who else is in the room? I'm always uh, excited to see where. You know, what exotic places people dial from. Sometimes we have people from Venezuela and, ah, there you go, Chris DeSanto from Shanghai. There is a, an exotic one. Chris, what are you working on? Burlington, Massachusetts is very exotic. I fully agree with you, Michael.
Chris, you're running a mid-stage startup in e-commerce. Okay, great. We do a lot of e-commerce work. We are we have quite a lot of uh, lot of understanding of e-commerce in in a lot of depth, lot of case studies, lot of experienced e-commerce entrepreneurs have been part of the uh, development process of the program. So we have deep expertise in e-commerce. E-commerce has huge potential. I think e-commerce is going to be one of the biggest, um, you know, online mar online industries in the world, and it's a global opportunity. Mary Sue Papel is from San Francisco, fast-growing online shoe store, and thought she would listen in. That's fantastic. Again, e-commerce. That's awesome. Who else? Who else is in the line? Who else is in, is in the room, actually? Uh, Irina, are you are you in the room? And if Irina is not, then Maureen, can you put her phone number and email and Skype into the public chat so people can call them, uh, call her if needed? Dave Sherman from Core Mobile, Andover, Massachusetts, not far from exotic Burlington, Massachusetts. That's right, home of the Phillips Academy. Maureen, can you put in Irina's phone number, etc., into the call, into the public chat? Dave, what are you working on in Andover, Massachusetts? Are you doing a startup already or thinking about doing a startup? By the way, folks, there's one thing I want to highlight for those of you who are not either not doing an entrepreneurship program inside your uh, of your employer or uh, you have not started a company already and you're thinking about um, you know, starting something in, at a later date, it's perfectly okay for you to start working with us because uh, we kind of, we have this philosophy of bootstrapping with a paycheck as well. So a lot of people actually start their companies while sitting inside, you know, major corporations and they have their day jobs and they work nights and weekends to develop their ideas, learn how to validate those ideas and so forth. So we do have a large number of members who are doing this bootstrapping using a paycheck methodology of uh, starting a company, and, and you're very welcome to do that. We are the only incubator in the world who will support you in that process. Most incubators will require that you quit your job and, and, um, and then start their incubation program. We don't care. We are happy to let you do whatever works for you. And in fact, bills need to be paid, so having a paycheck paying the bills while you're, you know, getting your ducks lined up to launch a new company is quite perfectly all right, and a lot of successful companies have been founded that way. Yaisa Peter is in exotic Barbados and looking forward to becoming a premium member very soon. Awesome. We'll look forward to having you. And Maureen has put Irina Patterson's contacts on the screen on your public chat. So Irina at 1mby1m.com. Her phone number is 786-301-2456. She's in Miami, Florida, by the way. Her Skype ID is Irina Patterson. So Irina underscore Patterson. Feel free to call Irina and she'll be happy to help you address any questions that you may have about the 1M1M program. Dave Sherman, SFP, SFP Startup for Big Data. Uh, what is SFP? SFP, Startup for Big Data Analytics and Mobile, HANA-based, established, but I enjoy your direct advice and straightforward approach. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate your comment on that because uh, it's not something that's um, you know, available that easily and, and it's also not something that is deeply you know, packaged and sugar-coated to make it very uh, 
warm and fuzzy, but I think what we try to do what people need to hear, we try to tell people what they need to hear in this mentoring format. Startup focus program, got it, Dave. By the way, Dave, uh, I don't know if you know Chris um, from Aporio, um, Chris Carter, who was here in the, on the call earlier in the session. Chris is also part of the 1M1M program and the SFP, uh, SFP Startup Focus program, and he's already over a million dollars in revenue, and, and I think he's benefited quite a lot from the program. Yeah, so uh, feel free to use the program if you like to. Anybody else? And Dave Sherman, where are you based? Well, if you guys don't have any further questions, comments, introductions, points of view, then uh, I will, oh, Dave is somewhere exotic near Berlin, uh, in Andover, sorry, 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 I, you, you've, uh, you've already said that. Great. Okay, well, uh, we will see you, we will see you next week, hopefully. Um, please go to the website and you'll find all the registration information. And again, folks, please spread the word around because we really want your help and need your help to get the word out about the 1M1M one &one program. And uh, as you know, our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs build at least a million dollar businesses. Now, that's not going to happen unless you all help us locate million serious, millions of serious entrepreneurs, right? So we will continue to do our part, and, and please do give us a hand in getting the word out. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for participating in the program today, and we will be back here next week, same place, same time, and see you then. Bye-bye.